EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Martich here with your outlook for September 21st, 2022. It is the final full day of summer as autumn will be arriving tomorrow evening at 9.03 p.m. So uh, it will definitely feel like summer today with that very warm temperatures. As you can see above me, 80 to 85 is the spread in temperatures from northwest to southeast today. So it will feel like summer today. And then almost on cue, there will be a trough arriving on the first day of autumn uh, on Thursday with cooler temperatures and even cooler on the other side of that on Friday. We'll get to that here in today's video. First and foremost, the Wednesday video forecast is proudly sponsored by the Walters and Zerinsky team at Keller Williams Real Estate serving Carbon, Lehigh, and Northampton counties in eastern Pennsylvania. Mentioned you saw this ad spot on the EPA WA video and the Walters Zerinsky team will offer a credit toward movers, a one-year home warranty, or general repairs with any successfully closed real estate transaction. Give Mike and Sarah a call today and find out what sets them apart in the real estate industry. They can be reached at 610-867-8888. Proud sponsors of the Wednesday video forecast. So today, we have a mostly sunny day, at least most of it to start, and then partly cloudy later in the afternoon and evening. And then overnight, we'll have some clouds continue to increase as we have this cold front moving toward the region. I don't think most of us are going to get into precipitation, though, until we get to Thursday morning. So this is a change from the previous video. Uh, we, we're always working on timing and last-minute timing here with stuff. But this is looking, at, looking like just showers, but it will be a little bit delayed. So coming in on Thursday morning and then overspreading the area throughout the day here on uh, Thursday. So here's what the uh, European model has. It has that front moving through. Of course, down to the south here is a major Hurricane Fiona, which is uh, at the 11 o'clock advisory this evening was 125 miles per hour. So it is uh, a major hurricane and is going to expect it to be a Category 4 storm en route to Bermuda or very close to it. Uh, but that will not be an influence to our region other than some rip currents along the East Coast here. So we'll have to watch for that here. And then most likely the increased surf and rip current threat will be most prevalent on Friday and Friday evening, we think, across our region. But uh, we'll continue to watch this move away, being picked up by this trough and sent northeastward. Uh, before we get to that, I want to get to the NAM High Res Future Simulated Radar. We're going to start this off at 5 o'clock in the morning here on uh, on Thursday or Thursday morning. So this is wee hours of the morning. It's not even into Williamsport here as far as the rain is concerned, but we have some light showers and scattered showers moving across the region here on Thursday morning. Then I'll go into the afternoon hours. Uh, there might be very late in the day as we get the mid to late afternoon. This is looking at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You see most of the shower activity is in our far southeastern areas at, at this point. And coming in into the interior, there is an opportunity that you might get a little bit of partial clearing very late in the day in some of those areas where the rain shuts off but it will continue further south and east through late afternoon and uh early evening we probably get a little bit of a break in here before this finally completely pulls away and we don't have any more precipitation with that so thursday's just showery weather nothing uh, overly uh, intense uh, but it will be a nuisance mostly cloudy throughout the day uh with those showers around and again some areas will the farther northwest you go in our region it'll end a little bit earlier early afternoon uh, it'll be late afternoon before it ends in our southeastern areas, and then that should be wrapped up at, by about evening uh, time here on Thursday, and then becoming partly cloudy overnight as this pulls away. So again, this trough is going to pick up Fiona and send it northeast. We have another one to talk about that we have to keep in the back of our minds. I'm going to show you that here in a second once I get done with the seven-day. Uh, this weekend is going to be very cool, uh, unusually cool. Uh, it's going to be sl slightly below average, actually well below average here on Friday with temperatures that are going to be in the 60 to 65 degree range. Some areas in the northern areas will not get out of the 50s for highs on Friday, despite mostly sunny conditions expected. And uh, it will be a little bit breezy as well. We're looking at 15 to 25 mile per hour winds throughout the day. Uh, some gusts to maybe 30, maybe even 35 in a few spots. Uh, with this uh, cold air advection related wind. This is something we're getting going to have to get more used to going through fall. Every time you get these impressive troughs that come through, you're going to have some wind accompanying those troughs. And uh, it's not going to be crazy just yet, but it looks like uh, some gusty winds will be accompanying um, the post-frontal period. Once the front comes through, the winds kick up, cold air advection moves in. And then Friday, we're looking at between 60 and 65 for most areas. But again, the far northern areas might be stuck in the upper 50s 
for highs here on Friday. We do moderate a little bit on Saturday, despite remaining mostly sunny here Saturday right here. Nothing going on as far as weather is concerned. It's another mostly sunny day, but temperatures are going to increase about 5 degrees from what we saw. Whatever your high is on Friday, add about 5 degrees of that here for Saturday. And then we're going to go up about another 6 or 7 degrees here for Sunday as we get temperatures that are generally near average, but uh, that near average is going to be on either side of 75 degrees. So kind of like a 73 to 78 degree spread for temperatures here on Sunday. We'll have an increase in clouds, and we have another trough coming through that's going to bring showers overnight Sunday night into at least Monday morning. And then beyond this, uh, we turn to partly cloudy skies here on Tuesday uh, in its wake. But temperatures uh, at that point are going to lower a little bit behind that second trough. The second trough is not as quite as impressive as this first one that's going to come in uh, on Thursday and set up Friday to be a really chilly day. It's not going to be like that here for the second time, but temperatures are going to lower again. We'll be uh, slightly below average behind that for at least a couple of days uh, that will settle in here on Tuesday. Tuesday's highs we're looking on either side of 70 degrees uh, as we get into next week here. But I do want to touch on the not only uh, Fiona. Here's Fiona as we're looking at uh, this evening. This is looking at uh, actually overnight. This is uh, overnight tonight at 2 o'clock in the morning. Okay, there's where Fiona is. Yesterday battered the uh, Turks and Caicos Islands. Pretty pretty uh, nasty uh, s uh, situation there for, for those folks here on those islands. Uh, of course, it was in over uh, Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Dumped a tremendous amount of rain. And in some cases, over 20 inches of rain in some cases across uh, Puerto Rico and uh, at least the eastern part of the Dominican Republic before it moved up to the Turks and Caicos yesterday. This will be en route to, uh, going to be heading to the north and then eventually the northeast to kind of head into a path like that. So the path is not has not changed with this. So we're looking at a very close call for Bermuda. I think it's going to pass to the west of it and then eventually it will head up to the uh, Canadian Maritimes up by Newfoundland. And it'll be up there uh, probably about Saturday. Okay, so it's going to take a while to get up there. It'll become post-tropical and we'll be out of the picture. I do want to draw attention, though, to the next one. The next one is uh, something that could, could impact, uh, potentially impact the United States. Okay, and it might even impact our area down the road. That's way too early of a conversation to have, but we're going to certainly watch that. Some models are, uh, in fact, indi indicating that. But it's hard to see here, but this is this is South America down here. This is actually where I have the X there is Venezuela. Uh, this is uh, Colombia. And these little islands, where this, this is what we're paying attention to right here. This little circled area is an invest. It's invest 98L, and it is expected to be overnight tonight near... Ah oh boy. Uh, these islands, I, I tell you what, if you want to be, if you, if you wanted to be a meteorologist, uh, obviously... Uh, calculus is a big part of it. Uh, physics is a big part of it, but also geography. So I've got to try to remember what these islands are here. I know this is uh, this is Aruba right here. This is Trinidad. That's it. I couldn't could, couldn't think of it. So I knew it would come to me. So these islands here. Uh, this is the this is Trinidad and and Tobago. This is uh, the two island. It's an island nation. Uh, so this is where it's uh, actually off the coast of Venezuela. It's its own nation, and uh, that is where the uh, tropical or the uh, invest is currently located. This is going to be an area of interest. We expect this to go through this uh, channel, through the southern Caribbean islands, and kind of go like this, do one of these numbers here, something like that. That's generally the idea we think this is going to end up taking, and it eventually ends up, ends up in the Big Bend of Florida. At least that's what current projections show. This could move around a little bit. This is going to take a long time to go from here all the way up to here, okay? This is uh, probably a good week, if not longer, to get to from, from point A, which is right here, to point B, which is the Big Bend of Florida, if it, in fact, goes that direction. So this is something we're going to be watching over the next uh, week or so, okay? So this is the next, but this one has potential to develop, and I'm just going to move this forward. This is what the GFS did today, so you can see what this does, and it moves, doesn't really develop at a, at a fast pace as it moves uh, north of Venezuela and uh, Colombia, just south of Jamaica, which is right here. This is Jamaica right here. So uh, we are expecting this to very slowly develop. And then once it gets into the Western Caribbean, 
and approaching Cuba east of the Yucatan Peninsula, which is right here. Uh, it's going to move up through this channel or over western Cuba and intensify, I think. Okay, so this is going to move up into the Gulf of Mexico. Very warm water there to work with if it does get in that position. So this can really blow up if that's the case, unfortunately. And this takes a track uh, somewhere, oh, you need the Panhandle of Florida or the Big Bend of Florida. And then this continues northward after that. Again, I don't want to get a jump the gun here with something downstream if we can get some remnant rains out of this. But we're certainly going to be monitoring this very closely. This is getting way out there. This is September 30th right here uh, where it's showing a landfall. Okay, and, and obviously today's only uh, the 21st. So we get a lot of time to look at this. But I just want to keep, you know, I want you to keep this in the back of your mind because people are going to start talking about this because this is no longer interesting to them since it's missing the United States. This next one here. Uh, could potentially uh, pose a threat to a part of the United States. Whether that's further west in the Gulf of Mexico, whether that's Florida, whether it affects us or not, we don't know that yet, okay? So we're just going to monitor this over the next week. And once we get into late September and October, most of your originating source of any tropical systems are typically in this area. So you're going to see this map a lot when we're talking about any tropical entities, not only this one, but anything going forward beyond that, usually forms in this area rather than the Mid-Atlantic or the... the uh, main development region in the in the Atlantic between Africa and the Leeward Islands, okay? So this is not out here in the Atlantic, way out in the Atlantic. The development area is going to be over the Caribbean or Gulf of Mexico, most likely uh, over the next uh, month or month and a half, okay? So uh, hurricane season goes through November 30th, but usually our realistic time frame is through the end of October. So we'll just have to keep a close eye on this region specifically. And we do have one to track here, Invest 98L. We're going to keep an eye on this and see what this does, uh, you know, not only for U.S. interests, uh, for family members that might be down there if you're going on vacation. These are important things to understand, but also any after effects with remnant rainfall and wind that we've been experiencing in our area. Too early to tell, but we'll continue to follow it in the week ahead. I'm EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marchus. That is your outlook for September 21st, 2022. Have a great Wednesday.